All right. Welcome back once again. Church, it's good to be <clears throat> together with all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ during this very special day, and that is the Valentine's Day. And today <clears throat> we're going to be talking about Valentine, but Valentine from God's point of view, God's kind of love. That is what we're going to be talking about. And even as the world is celebrating Valentine's Day, I want for us to just meditate on the love that God has offered to each one of us in his son, Jesus Christ. And so I believe that God will uh, speak to us about his love and reveal his love to each one of us because everything depends on that love. And the life that you now live, it's because of the love of God. And so it's the God kind of love that we want to talk about today. Shall we all look to God in prayer? God, our Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. We thank you for the time to fellowship like this together. Even though we cannot be physically <clears throat> be with one another, we can still fellowship with one another in this manner. And so we give thanks to you and we praise your name for who you are to each one of us. Thank you, Father, for your love towards us. Reveal your love yet again in a fresh way today. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Yes, as the world is celebrating Valentine's today and uh, the world is looking for love, I want for us to look at the love of God our Father. I remember an old country song that says looking for love in all the wrong places, right? Many of the people in the world are looking for love. Everybody in this world needs love. And we're looking for that love in all the places. And they're all in the wrong places. The only place where you can find real fulfillment, the real love that will fulfill your heart, desire is found in the love of God. And that is what I want for us to uh, meditate on today. <clears throat> the Bible says in a very, very familiar verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish, shall not die, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that is the love that we're talking about today. There is a, somebody say, there is a God-shaped hole inside the heart of every human being. And unless God himself fills that hole, there is such an emptiness in the hearts of every human being. And we're well aware of how people try to fill that hole in their hearts through different ways and different means. Some people go for shopping. Some people go for uh, drinking. Some people go for fashion. Some people go for pornography. Some people go for love. And they look for it 
in all the places. But unless God finds us and fills that hole on the inside, nothing can satisfy us. But God is so good and he has made a provision for us to be filled by his love, to be filled by himself. And my life was radically transformed because he found me and he filled me with his love. And that is because he was looking for me because of his love for me. Sometimes when we read, for God so loved the world, when we talk about the whole world, it becomes a little impersonal. And therefore, I want for us to make it personal today. For God so loved Caleb. And I want you to fill your own name over there. For God so loved you personally that he gave his only begotten son. And one of the things that has made a radical transformation, brought a trans radical transformation in my life is the revelation of the truth that even if I was the only person in this world, God would still send his son, his only begotten son, the only son he has to die for me, to bring me back to him. And when I realized that and when I believe in that, there was such a change and such a transformation that took place in my heart. And so I want for us to receive this and make this love a reality in our life today. Now, as far as the world is concerned, they need this love too. And that's the reason why Jesus said, go, preach this good news. Even unto the uttermost part of the world. This world is a broken world. This world is a place where there is so much pain and hurt. And the only thing that can bring healing, long lasting healing is the love of the Father, our Abba Father. Jesus taught us to think of the heavenly God, the almighty God, the creator of the universe. Jesus taught us to come to him and call him Abba, meaning Papa or Daddy. Dad is what God longs for you and for me. And that is not religion. That is not a to-do list. But that is a relationship. And so today, as we celebrate Valentine's Day, I want for us to celebrate this relationship that Jesus came to give to you and to me. A relationship with our daddy father, with our daddy God. And Christianity is not a religion. I've always said that many a times, but it is a relationship. And God is longing for this relationship. And the price 
he paid for that relationship is the life of his own only begotten son, it says. The only one son that he had, he gave him up for you and for me. And I want you to make it personal, as I said in the beginning. He gave his son for me, Caleb. And when we make it personal, when we make it our very own, it is there that the transformation begins. It is there that this adventure of this new relationship begins. And it's no longer a burden for you and for me to live for God because it is a relationship. It is a love relationship. And I remember when I fell in love, it is not a burden for me to drive miles and miles or to walk miles and miles, to cycle miles and miles to see my loved one. When you're in love, it's not a burden. It is a joy. It's such excitement that we have when it is a relationship of love. And that is the kind of relationship that God wants us to have with him. And this God kind of love that he gave is called agape in the Greek language. This word is rarely used in secular literature. But that is the word which the Bible uses to describe the kind of love that God has for you and for me. Unconditional love that he has for you and for me. And once again, I want to underline the truth that the price that God paid to restore this relationship back with him is the very life of his only begotten son. I have a son and a daughter. And uh, if somebody comes and tells me, Caleb, I need to take your son away to pay for somebody else's life, for ransoming somebody else's life. If they come and tell me that, I don't think I'll be able to give up my only son. I've often thought about this. But God gave his only son for you and for me. Now, the price that a person is willing to pay can tell us the value of the thing or the person that is being purchased. If you're willing to pay more, the value of that thing is more. And if we think about the value that God paid to buy you and me, it is the highest price in heaven, the only son of God. That would have to be the highest price that God gave to buy you and me back. 
And so I want for us to receive the revelation of the value of your life. Many a times we don't value our own lives. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. Is what comes to me most of the time. The world would have you believe that you're of no value, you're of no consequence. But I want you to know that you are so valuable that God paid the highest price to buy you. And it is my prayer today that you will have a revelation, a true deep revelation of the value of your life today on Valentine's Day. Because of the love of God, he paid the highest price for you. That's what Valentine is all about for me. That's the God kind of Valentine I believe in. <clears throat> and so I want for us to receive this love. And if we receive this love, then we can pass on. We can give this love again away to the world. The Bible describes Jesus when he rose again from the dead as the first fruit. Uh, first fruit means the fruit that is co coming out first, right? After the seed is being sown. And the first fruit is an indicator that there are more fruits like this. They are on the way. More are coming. And so, when Jesus rose again, the Bible says Jesus is the first fruit. Then you and I are the followers. We are actually exactly like Jesus Christ. And those who believe in Jesus Christ are called children of God. That means we are exactly like Jesus in quality, in the spirit. And that's why John, the apostle, who calls himself the beloved of Christ, he says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And because of the price that God paid, you and I have become like Jesus. And as we receive and as we dwell on this amazing God kind of love that he has bestowed upon us, that God has shed abroad in our hearts, Paul said. As we live in that place of being loved by God, the love of God, the God kind of love will flow out from us. That's a supernatural kind of love. A love that will give its life for the loved one. And therefore, Paul said, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church, his bride, and gave his own life. Now, I said in the beginning that it will be difficult for me to give up my own son if somebody comes to take him away for a ransom for another person. But I truly believe that I can do that by the power of God in me, 
because Jesus is living in me. And just like Paul said, it is the life that I now live. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in and through me. So if it is Christ that is living in me, through me, then I can do what Christ did. And that is the truth. That is the reality. Everybody who has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, everybody who is saved, we have the God kind of love on the inside. We are perfect on the inside, in the spirit man. We are exactly like Jesus Christ in the spirit man. And therefore, you can love exactly like Jesus Christ. And this is the new life that Paul was talking about. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. That is who you and I are. And therefore, you and I can dispense the God kind of love to this broken world. But first, we have to receive it. First, we need to be loved by him. And that's why John says, in this is love. Not that we love him, but that he loved us first and gave his son as a propitiation for our sins, for the sins of the whole world. And so today, as we celebrate Valentine's Day, I want to focus on in the God kind of love that he has put in your heart and in my heart. And there is a purpose for your life and my life. And that is to reflect the love of God to this broken world. That's your purpose. That's my purpose. To be the healing balm for this world through the love, the God kind of love that you have on the inside. And as we end, I would like to draw your attention to this amazing <clears throat> Bible passage from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 on words. It says <clears throat> that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. It's by faith. Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, in agape, in the God kind of love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Many a times we have heard sermons that preaches to have the fullness of God. You must do this, 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 all these spiritual disciplines. But the Bible is very clear here. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. If you want to be filled with the, all the fullness of God, what do you do? You have to know the love of Christ. That's it. If you have a revelation of the love of Christ, the love of God, the God kind of love, then you will be filled to the fullness of God. And when you're filled to the fullness with God, your life will bring healing to this broken world. And that is the kind of love that God would help 
have us live out in this world. But as I said, to impact the world, you have to have the God kind of love on the inside. You have to let yourself be loved by him. The one who is full of love, the one who is defined as love. Because the Bible says God is love. God is love. And let us be filled to the fullness of God through the knowledge of the love of Christ. Now, the knowledge, it says to know, to comprehend, that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints, the width, the length, the depth, and the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Now, it sounds like a contradiction, right? To know which passes knowledge. To know something that is beyond knowledge is what Paul is trying to say. That is because agape love has to be experienced. It has to be an experiential love. And in the Old Testament, we see many a times that love is described as knowing, right? The Bible says, Adam knew his wife Eve and Eve conceived and gave birth to a son, right? Abraham knew his wife, Sarah, and a son was born. So that is a love that is that has to be experienced. And as we experience this love that comes from heaven, you will be filled with the fullness of God. So let us <clears throat> pray that we will have the revelation of this experiential kind of love, the love of God. And we will comprehend the width, the length, the depth, and the height of the love of Christ. And that is what I want to encourage us. Stay in that place of drawing the love of God into your life and into your hearts. And then you will be able to love the world around you. So let's thank God for giving us his son because of his love for you and for me. And celebrate this special day of love with the love of Christ. Shall we all look to God in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time that you've given to us to reflect briefly on the kind of love that you have for us, the unconditional agape love that transforms our life. I believe that this is the only thing that will bring transformation in our country and in all the countries of the world. Therefore, I ask you for people who will know your love and will go out into the world and share this love that you've given to us. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. And as God has loved us, he also has uh, left us an ordinance where he says, do this in remembrance of me. And so it's time for us to celebrate the <clears throat> Lord's Supper. 
and I want for us to uh, have this supper together, the Lord's Supper. And uh, please get hold of a cup and something to eat. Anything is okay. I have a roti over here that my wife made for this very occasion. And we're going to break this bread and we're going to have this together. And uh, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body that was broken for you. And Peter said, through the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ, by his stripes, you were healed. And God has given us a provision for our healing, for our physical healing through the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we break bread today, I want for us to receive your healing. Receive your healing. If you have any physical ailment, I speak healing over your body even as we partake of this Lord's Supper together. So let me just pray for the bread and we will partake of it together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this broken body of yours that you've given to us so that we can have healing. Thank you, Lord, that as Jesus was beat, beaten, the Bible says we cannot even recognize his form and that is the kind of suffering that Jesus went for us and so we give thanks to you Father for your provision of healing through the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ and we partake of it with thanksgiving and we thank you for the healing that we're receiving right now in the name of Jesus Amen let's partake of this together and as you eat it Believe that you were healed by his stripes. You were healed. Shall we partake of it together? <clears throat> In the same manner, he also took the cup and he said, this cup is the... <clears throat> cup of the new covenant in my blood Jesus said the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary he says brings forgiveness for your sins and my sins not only your sin and my sin the believer's sin John says the blood is the propitiation for our sin, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. See, the sin of the whole world has been paid for. The only thing is, we have to receive it. We have to take it by faith and believe that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again on the third day. And if we believe, we receive his love. We receive his everlasting life, the very life of God we receive. And that was accomplished through the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is called the new covenant or the new testament. In the new testament, because of the blood, we have been made perfect forever. You and I, are forever perfect in the sight of God. That's who you are. And that's the blessing of the new covenant. And so let's give thanks for the forgiveness of sins and for the eternal life that you and I have. God says, your sins and your lawless deeds, I will remember no more. God does not remember your sins at all. So that's what the new covenant does for you and for me. So let, let's partake of this together.
with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let me just pray for the cup and we can partake of it together. Father, we thank you for this blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. The highest price you paid to buy me back through the very blood of your own son. And I thank you. I cannot do any other thing except to say thank you for your gift of love that you gave to me through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Thank you that this blood has washed me of all of my sins and you've cleansed me forever and you've made me perfect forever so that I can have this everlasting life, this everlasting relationship with you as my Abba Father. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving I pray. Amen. Let's drink this cup together and celebrate what Jesus has done for you and for me. Thank you so much for being here with us. I believe you've been blessed. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for a wonderful sharing and leading us in a time of the Holy Communion. Indeed, our nation will only be changed, transformed by the love of God. Rapid love. So if the presentation from Gabion International will work now, can we try again? Or should we just skip? Uh, I think we'll have to skip that. Next Sunday we will do that. Okay. Whoever is watching this, please stay tuned for the Gideon International um, presentation. That will be uh, displayed next Sunday. I would like to give the time to Pastor again now to give us a benediction. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, receive the benediction. Father, we thank you for this wonderful Sunday that you've given to us, for this wonderful Valentine's Day. And I pronounce your blessing upon every individual. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Abba Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one until we meet again. Amen. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.